Parents and community members are often unavailable to attend board meetings and work group meetings of the board. Other than encouraging residents to attend meetings, what actions will you take to make the board and yourself accessible to the community? I think it's important that all of our data be online and we've made major changes to be able to be more open in terms of both public input at our meetings, to have our documents put online quickly, to let people know in advance what our agenda items are, and as a consequence of a lot of these changes, we won the first place in all of Virginia of all the school districts and all the other local governments for our open government. I think there's always room for improvement in anything, but we have, are quite dedicated to being able to do that. I think it's also important that we make ourselves available to PTAs, to civic groups, to church education groups, to all those nodes in the community where there are clusters of people, like your organizations, that obviously have a great interest in what we're doing. Uh, I have pushed to have our meetings be later in the, the evening. We changed our discipline committee so that part of that uh, has evening hours and the parents don't have to leave work or jeopardize their jobs to be able to attend when their children are in disciplinary difficulty. Uh, I think it's also important that we try to have more information available online. We have the capability now, now that we've totally redone our IT system, to begin to have uh, the capacity for parents to track what their children are doing academically just as the surrounding counties do. And I think that would be an important change for us to put in place. I think increasing access to uh, any branch of government or any level of government <coughs> is always an important issue to tackle. Um, some of the things that we could explore uh, to increase people's access for those working families that might not be able to get down to City Hall um, on the first and third Mondays, maybe we ought to, and this was a great thing that I thought um, the school board did uh, during the rezoning process as well as uh, the budget process, was they actually went into the communities and had their meetings. So we ought, to, we ought to consider once a month, once a quarter, going to different districts, different communities, and having the school board meetings there. Let's meet folks where they are. Um, and, and we ought to, you know, increase like uh, Dr. Murdoch Hitt said, you know, availability of information online. Perhaps we ought to, you know, stream the school board meetings online. Uh, but anything that we can do to increase parental access, community access to all the things that are going on in Richmond Public Schools is, is clearly a good idea. Thank you. Now we can go to, we can start with the right here with um, Dr. Con Churchill. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, thank you. Thank you. No, I just cut uh, Vanessa. Now, I, I, sorry about that. I was that. just trying to be efficient and take control of the mic. Just pass around. Ditto. The things have already been said. Online presence, uh, having uh, as much information on the website. I've seen it. I've gone on it myself. Uh, I like the idea, and I think it's great to go into the communities, go where the uh, parents are, go into the neighborhoods, go into the community meet at some of the schools. Also, I thought about, uh, a city council person uh, sends out uh, a newsletter, and I have been challenged to see anything about an update of the schools in our district, and I think that's an opportunity to communicate to uh, the uh, district, too. Uh, let's not miss any opportunity to get information out there. And uh, this is also, uh, I think, a challenge for the city uh, council to work with school board to make uh, these things work for everyone. Yeah, one of the things I get a lot <clears throat> is the in-district meetings, and so I, I, I fully support that. Another way that we can do, I mean, uh, the, the streaming, the online access, the key is to get parents involved in the process. And, and another way I, I spoke with somebody about earlier was um, using City Stadium as a resource. All of our athletic events in the fall are scheduled for 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And a lot of parents that are working, even if they wanted to watch their kids play, can't get off of work. And we have a lot of different ways where we can expand uh, our resources that we currently have so parents can participate not just in the school board process, 
but in the activities of their children. So uh, that's, that's one thing I'm going to push is I'm going to try and uh, see if we can expand our schedules to include more games in town at a time when parents can attend. Yes, the same question. Yes, the same question. Um, I think it is extremely important to have parents participate and to make it as easy as possible because some of them are carrying some heavy burdens. I like all of the ideas that have been expressed. I agree with, with every single one of them. And I think we can generate even more ideas. Um, I think it would be great if we could have some kind of two-way communication on our IT site uh, so that parents can, you know, you can have an interactive presence so that the parents can also come on and share ideas and transmit those to the board in that way. In addition, in other words, uh, as with some of the videos you see on uh, the internet, they ask you to respond to it in some way, even if you just check like, dislike, or comment. I think it's important to get some input from the parents on what we did. That way you've got two-way communication going, and that can't be anything but possible. And I just want to say one more real quick thing. Um, one of the ideas I did not have an opportunity to talk about is online classes um, given by Richmond Public Schools. We've done this in other cities. I had an online school myself. Works really well. We can add to our enrollment by having 0.5 full-time students if they are uh, taking online classes from us, that, it, that ups our enrollment. And uh, it also offers opportunity to students who are enrolled full-time and need one or two more classes to graduate. So there are lots of ideas out there. Do check out our website, risingschools.com. I've got lots of ideas on there. First, I'd like to address something that came up when other folks were talking. Um, we do have a school in Richmond Public Schools that has a year-round calendar, and that's Patrick Henry Charter School. It's somewhat of a modified year-round, but the children are offered remediation throughout the year. The summer break is shorter, and the way the school, the, the reason the school chose to do it that way is with shorter breaks in the summer, you, there's less reteaching at the beginning of the year. So I think this would be great to implement in some other Richmond public schools. However, state laws are a little challenging. You have to get a waiver from the state because of the King's Dominion law. But um, I just wanted to, to let, her, let everybody know that we do have a school that operates on that schedule right now. But to address the, the question about communication, I think this is extremely important that we are in the community, talking to our parents, responding to them. I am in the community already. I'm a parent. I have two elementary school aged children. I'm going to devote at least 25 hours a week to this position um, because I think it deserves and needs that. I'm on the soccer field. I'm at the parks. I'm talking to folks. People call me all the time. Um, I, I'm not on the board right now, so I can't um, solve a lot of their problems, but I do make suggestions about you know, people they can call and things that I think they can do to advocate for their children. Thank you. Thank you. And now, um, I think our last candidate um, to answer tonight's questions, and then we'll go into closing, um, Albertina Carter. <coughs> Oh, you know it's the same question. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just make it sure. Because I've lost track a little bit there. That's true. There you go. Um, to, to engage parents um, as a representative, I plan to have neighborhood meetings um, and have focus teams in the community. Those focus teams will include parents and they will include students as well. One of the things that I did when I was on the uh, Richmond Police Department, I created a program called Community-Based Wall Calls. And that was an initiative whereby instead of police officers having their roll calls in a building, we actually had our roll calls out of the communities where the crimes were occurring. So we had our roll calls on street corners, we had them in libraries, 
We had them in some church neighborhoods, wherever the focus was for, uh, for crimes in that particular community. And I plan to do a very similar thing with our, um, with our, with our parents and our students in, in our neighborhoods. I heard it mentioned about later evening meetings. That is something that I would also be a proponent of. A lot of our parents, they work, and when they get off from work, a lot of times it is late. And it's a little bit too late to come to a meeting, to sit in, in a, a meeting at City Hall. So again, I would be a, a proponent of that. Um, also, as a board, we may even want to look at televising some portion of the school board meetings. There are some portions of the meetings that maybe cannot be televised. But for those portions that are televised, or, or that can be televised and open to the public, we should look at doing that. And then my last comment is I'd like to know how I can get the Stephen Covey training at Blackwell and Norwalk and um, Summer Hill and some of those other schools that I have in my district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.